All right, guys, happy new year. I have a superstition about even numbered years. I don't know why. For all my history, they've probably been terrible years, but for some reason, it just, 2024 has a nice flow. It's got nice, I don't know, it feels good mathematically. So I think it's gonna be a good year. Uh, in non wrestling terms, I'm gonna kick this off at the first week of the year, couple days, go to knuckles up. Now I'm in that rest phase, which has been easy for me in years past because I've been an idle fella. But now that I'm getting the, the gears turning, it's hard to sit around for a few days when I feel like I'm just getting rolling, taking time off that I know I probably need for a match. You know, a part of me would like to put like a six month block together of just like, go and then see what turns out. But I think I'll get that point eventually because after this one, go hard, take my little break for uh, February, end of February, then same thing before I go to uh, pull James Wall over in uh, Ireland. So a couple days going out to Knuckles Up. I think the card looks fun. I think it's going to be a really good event. I watched their first event over again and great production. Pretty excited about it. And in general, I'm just excited about what I have for the new year. Now, Knuckles Up's going to be interesting, not only for my match. And while we're talking about my match, let's discuss something real quick. I don't like um, the downplay that some of you have. I think on the West Coast, some of the people know that Brandon Allen's really leveling up. I don't like the downplay of it because, A, it puts a weird pressure on me. And it creates a, a skewed reality of how things should go. Uh, very much like when Bacho pulled Adam Morzinski. Everyone's like, who the fuck is this Bacho kid? No one ever heard of him. But when he's training with a good team of world champions, and they're like, yeah, kid's fucking super real. You know, it puts a lot of pressure on Adam and downplays Bacho. And then when Bacho wins, it either, it, it makes a real skew that this kid's either a superstar or, and this kid's a bum. You know, everyone's a nobody until they do something that makes them a somebody. I remember years back at the bottom eight, Chris Gobby was trashing on Ryan Bowen for being a, a basically a, a, an amateur at best. Trashing on him. Now, whether that's true or not, Ryan Bowen put a beating on Chris Gobby, and I mean, he really put a clinic on there. So the name of the game is, is that every single person is a nobody until they do that something that makes them a somebody. Justin Bishop. He wasn't a nobody. People in the South and around here knew who he was and stuff. He was starting to make waves. But on the world level, he had one tournament and he beat Giannis. And then all of a sudden, he went from being a kid from Alabama to everybody knew who the fuck that guy was. So, with due respect, when you get people that are training hard and training smart and they're dedicated, you've got to always keep your eye on that person because this sport is about evolution and you're one like step of learning and training and finding your lane to to really changing your game. So I come into this with as much respect as I would as if it was John Brzezink. Now, where's my physicality going to be? Only time will tell. But after that, you know, we'll, we'll just keep going. Keep going because I have goals this year and we'll talk about that. Um, Knuckles Up will also be interesting because speaking of Ryan Bowen, everyone's talking how we're going to be in the same building, right? Boom, boom, boom. So I want to play this one a little bit, uh, you know, light foot. Because I think that's a match that outside of the obvious ones people are talking about, like Devin and Levon and Devin versus whoever, that's a match a lot of people, like, really have yet to be satisfied of, like, they've never got that, that climax to that situation. And the thing about that situation is it was all genuine shit throughout the years. It's probably one of the true... Uh, YouTuber back and forth scenarios, whether it was lifting weights, challenging each other's status and credentials or whatever. So it was, you know, I, I'd really hate to uh, give a reveal that kind of satisfied people enough without a match coming out of that. That would be a shame. So we'll play, but I got to play it smart. I got a story called the Chugga, <laughs> the Chugga lesson. And it's it's a story from back in the day. I knew a guy who was a pool hustler turned arm wrestler. And he taught me a very valuable lesson about ego and eagerness. So that's something I'll, I'll get into. 
So yeah, really excited for Knuckles Up and to get back on the horse. Another thing about Ryan Bowen that I'd like to think about when we, we talk about moving forward is he made a video for, uh, I didn't see the whole thing, but I think in, he wanted to see if he could crack that 105 and who the top guys were, 15, top 15 at 105 kilograms, which I think is what, I don't know, 231 or something. Now, that's interesting because uh, part of the goal for me moving forward will be to climb that list. Now, I think a good spot for me, I've always said when I get to around 210 pounds, I start feeling like thicker and fuller, the way my musculature and my frame is, the way I carry weight. Once I get over like 210, so like through WAL, through that series, I was a true 195. I didn't cut and then go way in and I was like the day after like 220. I was a true 195. And I always realize, noticed like when I get to like that 210, um, my body just feels torquier and fuller. I feel, I feel more powerful. And I think that's a good weight for me. So in a perfect world, I'd walk somewhere between that like 210 and 220, more fit, in the gym, conditioned, and I could dip down and pull the 95s. And with the experience of the last few years and knowing what I know throughout my time and where I've been and who I've been and the competition that's out there, I believe I could take that class over. I believe that. I also believe that I could cross classes and go into 105 and just be like a heavy version of myself, whether it's 200 or uh, whether it's like 220 or 225 or whatever, and be a really big problem for that list as I climb the list. And right now I'm not on any of those lists. And I guess rightfully so. I'm inactive. You know, I can't expect that. And I also know that this sport is horribly unforgiving. And it's not just for me. I feel... Um, I see a lot of people get slashed up in the comments who are absolute legends and world champs of the sport. I saw Sarah Bachman, one of the very greatest girls to ever put her arm on a table, getting slashed because she lost to one of the other greatest girls to ever step on a table. I see Valley Vitali getting cranked on in one of his videos where he just picked up a dumbbell because he's got great hand strength. And people are like slashing on him because he lost a match, which FYI, that match is something I like to talk about. That match was decided by the straps. No, That's the only way you can spell it. Because when fucking Vitaly didn't have the buckle on his hand, he made surges right to the pad. And all of a sudden, he's got the buckle on the pad, and he's kind of getting surged halfway, but the buckle's hindering him from doing what he could do on the other side, which is why we need to rethink the straps. Even still, with a fairer strap, that's like getting less fucked. It's like only putting the tip in and not the whole thing. At the end of the day, it's still getting fucked. So don't just, you know, put the tip in. Like, fucked is fucked. The straps are still a fuck show. I'm not crying about it. For me, I'm looking at that match in general. I really think that with a different strap setup or because of the buckle and stuff, Vitaly was getting pretty decisive wins on that side. But in the comments, people are like, even on just strength shit, some are saying, you know, Vitaly's a beast, which is true. But people are banging the guy out like he's a shit bum over losing a few matches. Same with like guys like Dave. Dave go the rest of his life and just go like this with people and never feel him. And there's a couple guys in the world. So I get it. I get it. It's horribly unforgiving landscape per the fans and YouTube. But, um, and, I, and I get, you need activity to be on the, the, the roster. And you also, you know, winning, right? And you gotta be pulling the guys on the roster. I really believe that, when we have this conversation again next year, I'll be in a different position to talk that shit because only I know what my true intentions are and where I'm going. But I believe I could be at the top of the 95 class and really be a big fucking problem for that list at 105. That's my belief. That's my goal. I know my starting point. And just the objective is to just keep going, right? Keep throwing mud against the wall and something's going to stick. That's my rough goals for the year is just consistency and consistent climbing and kind of like not getting too bogged down by the bullshit. It's easy. We're all humans. I know I am, but it's about how much you let it like creep on you, whether it's life, whether it's online negativity, whether it's yourself. There's no 
question that I've been my own biggest hurdle, be it lifestyle, emotions, decisions. So I can get around this motherfucker. I can sure get around some of you negative motherfuckers and we'll just keep going. So happy new year, everybody. 2024 just has a really nice ring. And there's a lot of rumors in the rumor mill that there's some cool shit about to happen. Cool shit about to pop off. And I'm not quite as much in the know. But I'm in the know enough uh, more than some of you guys. So what I hear. And of course, I'm skeptical. But there's also a lot of good promotions currently in place. We got the Monster Factory. We got all this stuff going on with stem cells. And they're having events. And East First West. And there's, there's a lot of promotion rumoring going on around. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to stay active. I'm going to stay at it. Stay fit. Uh, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. See y'all in a couple days. Knuckles up. Here we come. New Jersey.